discuss how LNG is transported from one place to another and after, uh, after coming to its destination, how this LNG is unloaded from the vessel, floating vessel to the uh, onshore terminal and then how it is regasified in a regasification plant. So that we are going to see in this today's episode. So stay connected with us till the end of this video. So this is a, an interesting episode which will be the final part of our LNG series. So based on the construction of LNG transportation vessels, there are two types of vessels which are right now prominent in the market. One is the membrane type which we can see here and the other one is the self-supporting or the spherical IMO type which we can see on the left side. So the IMO type spherical uh, vessel is a very robust and uh, it is a very uh, rigid construction. So uh, and based on the manufacturers we have the MOS tanks spherical IMO type B LNG vessels then the second one is the IHI prismatic IMO type B LNG tanks the third one is the TGZ mark 3 the TGZ stands for the Technicas which is a French company who is a manufacturer of this the fourth is the GT96 fifth is CS1 so these are the most uh, popular manufacturers and the types of the vessels which are there in the market right now. Now we will see what happens when uh, the unloading takes place, how the unloading takes place. So as far as the unloading of the LNG happens uh, it is received in two types of regasification plants. The one regasification plant which we can see here is the floating LNG and regasification plant and the other one is the onshore LNG storage and regasification plant. So each of these has its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the floating LNG storage which is uh, called as FLNG uh, it is it, uh, it, the advantage of this is that it can be it is a mobile uh, plant which can be uh, transferred to other location so based on the market dynamics this is very important I can give a very uh, good example of uh, India where which was importing the natural gas or the LNG from Iran and because of the global sanctions on Iran so the import of LNG has affected. So problem is that if we are using the onshore LNG terminal then the setup cannot be mobilized. So in that case uh, the plant goes waste. But if we are having the FLNG facility which is a floating one uh, it can be easily relocated to the other location maybe in the Bay of Bengal from where uh, the, uh, India gets LNG from some other uh, exporter, some other exporting country. So this is the advantage of the FLNG and of course the operating cost may be a bit higher in case of FLNG because the, since the entire plant is floating uh, floating on sea on the water so that may, uh, that is why the operating cost may be a bit higher uh, and in case of the onshore uh, LNG storage uh, that operating cost may be comparatively lesser since uh, it is onshore and uh, of course once uh, the problem which we discussed now the market dynamics and there may be some other reasons also 
this plant is very difficult for relocation so that is the disadvantage of that so uh, moving forward we will see how the regasification process takes place so this is the process flow diagram of the lng regasification plant uh, here we can see the lng tanker which is unloading the lng to the lng storage tank here we can see now in the lng storage tank on the top we can see bog that is boil of gas recondenser so what is the boil of gas that uh, we will be discussing in very short but we will be uh, we will we will be making a dedicated episode on what is uh, auto refrigeration and which is directly related to this boil of gas so boil of lng is nothing but uh, the lng vessel is basically uh, insulated uh, isolated very heavily uh, from the atmosphere because it it has to conserve the lng at minus 162 degrees celsius uh, but even after so many insulation there is a tendency of heat transfer and because of which because of which some content of the lng will definitely vaporize so if this uh, lng is not removed from the storage uh, tanks the cryogenic storage tanks then the process of uh, evaporation will increase drastically so this lng is removed from the tank it is uh, vaporized uh, sorry it is removed uh, and it is used for uh, running a power plant or a gas turbine and because of this uh, refrigeration effect how it takes place when the lng vaporizes it absorbs the latent heat of evaporation from the surrounding which is inside the cryogenic tank and it creates a refrigerating effect so because of this effect you need not have to install a separate a uh, refrigeration unit for the lng tanker which in fact would have been a very costly affair and it is not economical also so this uh, this uh, concept of auto refrigeration will help the lng to maintain its pressure uh, maintain its temperature sorry minus 162 degrees celsius and without a need of a refrigeration plant so this is called auto refrigeration so the same way in lng also lng storage tank once it is loaded in uh, at the onshore terminal also uh, the lng storage tank will have some boil of gas so this boil of gas is again used to run the compressor so why this compressor is used the purpose of this compressor is to compress the natural gas because in the regasification plant the lng will be converted into a gaseous state natural gas so we have to compress this natural gas so that we can feed this gas in the gas grids for distribution to different places uh, point of utilization so here in the lng storage tank the lng is transferred by means of high pressure lng pumps to the lng vaporizer so in the lng vaporizer uh, basically is nothing but a heat exchanger where the lng is transferred into tubes uh, as we know how the vaporizers are there it is a heat exchanger and the outside of that is covered or surrounded by a sea water why sea water because sea water is the most cheapest medium which is available uh, on the shore because it is uh, the this uh, plants are normally located near to the sea because uh, the lng carrier is uh, basically uh, offshore vessel so that is why the 
sea water is the cheapest medium which is available easily and uh, by means of sea water the liquefied natural gas is again converted into gas by means of heat transfer in the lng vaporizer unit and the gas which is obtained in gas uh, natural gas is again compressed here we can see the compressor which is running on the bog that is the boil of gas and this uh, uh, compressor is uh, utilized for compressing the lng to form make a cng that is uh, compressed natural gas so here the cng is metered and then transferred into pipeline here we can see odorizer odorizer is what is odorizer this we have to understand uh, the cng is odorless it doesn't have any smell so some component uh, some compound is added which is odorizer the purpose of uh, adding this is to give an peculiar order to the cng so if there is a order then people can identify if there is any leakage in cng of uh, natural gas so that is the purpose of giving uh, adding a odorizer mixing up mixing an odorizer with the natural gas so this is how the entire process of lng transport and regasification so do comment on our video we insist you to like subscribe to our channel this is a free training channel it is your channel so it is your duty and responsibility to share this video as much as possible with your friends and colleagues so that we can we can be able to make such informative videos in future so stay connected with us and thanks again for watching this video thank you